So, all right, well, we're recording, we're live, here we go. Um, so I've got a lot of stuff and I've had a lot of information. I've had um, like probably two weeks to kind of think about this call and work on this call and I worked on it today. Um, so like I said, I made you guys a PowerPoint too. So I got pretty, pretty nifty today. Um, but first I just wanted to go over a few announcements and just some things just to touch on and make sure we're kind of all on the same page, know what's going on. Um, but one of the, um, one thing I was just listening to a call today and they were talking about it. And I know, um, a lot of us, like when that new week rolls over on Thursday and you look in your back office to see what your commissions and all that stuff. And you see all those red people that show up as inactive and you're all like, Oh my gosh, I have all these inactive people. What the heck? You know? And I always, um, you know, look and see, okay, when is their shift date? Because like, let's say, so like, Thursday this week is the fourth. Let's say that their ship date is the sixth. Since it's the new week, they will show up as inactive. And then once it ships, then it switches over. So what I was told today on this call was that, um, you know, Wednesday night, sometime Wednesday during the day is when you should check your, um, your back office, your sponsorship, sponsorship drill down see where everybody's at. If, and some of us that are getting closer into rank advancing to diamond and those kind of things, you need to be checking on that Wednesday night to, you know, I would actually just start getting in the habit Wednesday morning, checking it and saying, okay, where am I at? Who's inactive? Who's going to make me, you know, who, who's struggling? You know, where do I need to focus on and look at your coaches too, when you get to that point as well. Um, and then, you know, Thursday you can log on, check your commissions. Okay. Then you see there's two or three people that are inactive before you freak out, check when their ship date is. And then Sunday morning or Sunday night or whenever go back and check. And if those people are still red on Sunday, those are the ones that you need to check with because all of those HD orders will go out on Saturday. So if they're still red on Sunday, that is the day to check them and see, okay, hey, what's going on here? Check in with them. Do you not like your flavor? Are you canceling it? You know, what are you doing? So check on Wednesday, and I need to get in a better habit of doing this too because I'll just randomly look, and I'll be like, oh, they're red. Well, I'll check back in a couple days, and then I forget, and then all of a sudden they're gray and active, and I'm like, well, uh, do I check with them? You know, all this kind of stuff. So I need to do a better job of it too, and I'm going to make sure to post it in the group. Hey, it's Wednesday. Check your drill down. How are you guys looking? Hey, it's Sunday. Check back with those red and active. So I will keep reminding you guys until we get into a habit of doing it. But I just wanted to throw that out um, to you as well, too. Um, one other thing I noticed is in our challenge groups, we we're doing a good job, you know, doing our posts and trying to post your recipes and doing all that stuff. But just remember to keep um, your posts positive. Like, if your workout totally sucked and you hated it, put that in a different group or send that as a private message to somebody. Don't post that in the group because the challengers are looking at us as the leaders. And if we are sitting here like, oh, this sucked. I wanted to sleep instead. Like, I just, I hate my life. I hate working out. That's going to relate to the challengers. Um, if, you, if, if you don't have time for your workout, you know, you, like something comes up and you don't get to it. You know, save that for that Fantastically Fit Friends group if you want to complain in there or whatever. But keep in our groups um, positive. Like, if you're going to have a cheat meal or whatever, don't tell that to the group. Because I had a challenger the other day, a new challenger. She's like, so what's a cheat meal? I was like, oh, no. I'm like, well, she's like, is it like pizza? I'm like, well, you, you know, it's a meal that you, you know, you like to eat, blah, blah, blah. I'm like you really shouldn't like it's, it's not encouraged, but if you need to have it, you can. Cause technically if you're doing hammer and chisel, you're not supposed to have any cheats at all. Like you're not supposed to have wine. You're not supposed to have beer. You're not supposed to have like anything, you know, and the fix is a little bit more lenient. But as soon as that challenger said that to me, I was like, Oh shoot. Like, and you know, I know in other coaches, I know in other groups will say that too. Hey, I'm saving this for my cheat. Um, but I think in our groups, especially when we have new challengers that are saying, what's a cheat meal, you know, and yes, we know that, okay, you are going to slip up and have pizza. You are going to have wine. Like it's okay. But I think we need to have that face front of, nope, you know, we're sticking to it. If you can do it, if I can do it, you can do it. 
and go on from there. So, um, you know, if you want to post that in the fantastically fit friends that, you know, you're drinking wine tonight or you fell asleep and skipped your workout or like you totally hate chisel agility or whatever, um, you know, that's fine, but let's try and keep it in our groups try and keep up that positivity. Cause I know like, especially if somebody will post like one of our challengers will say, Oh, I just, I hate the yoga one. I know like Christy is always really good about being like, Oh, I love yoga. It's my favorite Sunday. That's what we need more of. Like when somebody is negative, we got to build up that positivity because that yoga is in there for a reason, you know? So, um, let's just keep, keep that in mind as it comes to those kind of things. Okay. I'm going to try, hopefully this works because I put, a lot of effort into this today. I'm going to try and share my screen. Maybe, where do I do that? At? Oh, share screen right there in the middle. I want you to see my desktop. Okay. Can you guys see this? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and then slideshow. You still see it? Yep. Uh, check out that yeah, graphic, right? Isn't that, isn't that pretty cool? Pretty sweet. <laughs> Thank God for snow days every once in a while. Okay. Um, so still kind of going on theme nonsense. Hopefully you've seen these, but here are all the challenge packs that are on sale. You've got um, your fix, extreme, size, and then um, uh, the kickstart. So that would be like 21 day fix and the three day refresh and Shakeology. Um, and then down at the bottom, your three day refresh and Shakeology. So if they, if they already have like a program and they want to do a three day refresh and purchase Shakeology, you know, that might be something you want to look at. Um, you know, they're going to save 20 bucks. So yeah, if a lot of you I know have, have challengers that already have the containers. They already have the program. This might be something to push because we know the real benefits of the challenge packs not only because it benefits us, but also because it, it truly is the best deal for them. So, you know, somebody already has the, the containers or the program or whatever, and they don't want to purchase another program, maybe look at going that way, getting them the three-day refresh and the Shakeology. Um, team Cup. So here are your prizes. I know we've kind of shared them and talked about them and stuff before. Um, but with Tier 1, you have to have 30 team points. And um, you have you have to have Success Club five. So if you're on your team and you guys hit tier one, but you only have two Success Club points, you you won't get anything. Um, tier two, your team has to have fifty points, and you have to have Success Club seven or ten. So you you can't just have five. You have to have seven to get that tier two prize. And then tier three is seventy five points. And you have to be at Success Club 10. So obviously, I know all of you are pushing for that Success Club 16. So there's no reason that you all should not be eligible for that Tier 3 prize. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about, or we know the points. Each Success Club point is worth a point for the Team Cup. Each rank advance is worth three points. So each of you, that should be your goal, is to rank advance. Or if you are starting to get coaches under you, encouraging them to get to Emerald because if you have a coach that rank advances, that's three points as well. And I know if you were on Heather's call last week, she talks about how the, the, the rank advancements are really going to help us, all of us, in, um, in this Team Cups. So like, for example, Megan should officially be Diamond on Thursday. So she has this personally sponsored coach that um, rank advance, that's three. She rank advanced, that's three. I have a personally sponsored coach that rank advanced, so that's three. So we have nine points there um, right off the bat. So, you know, if somebody else rank advances to Diamond, that's three points for a group. Or you add two coaches and they rank advanced to Emerald, that's six points. So that's going to be huge um, as well. So thinking about that and moving that forward. Here's a calendar. I can't remember if I shared it in our group, but here's a little breakdown from – um, Alyssa actually made this. So, you know, I know sometimes thinking about 16, SC 16, that can seem huge, but really break it down to eight people. I want to help eight people this month. So, you know, we're already at the second. Your goal by Friday should be to help two people. Then by next Wednesday to help three. Um, the 15th, which again, we're going to be having another challenge group on the 15th. So you have five lives that you've helped by then. Then on the 21st, you have six. 
And then by the 26th, you know, four weeks from now, you have your eight lives. So, and then again, you look at that, that's $320. You know, what can you do with $320 in your commissions? You know, you take your psychology out of there, you still got $200. What did you make out of your $200? Or what can you do for that? So um, I have this written down in two or three different places. So um, it's constantly on my mind, you know, that moving forward and continuing to go from there. So um, any questions you guys have on those? Those are kind of my announcements to start with. Just a few things before we get into the meat. All right. Awesome. Okay. So um, last week... We didn't have a call. I can't remember why. There was something else going on. And so, oh, we had our live coaching event. Um, and I was going to do a recording because I really wanted to redeem myself from like two weeks ago when I was still kind of getting over being in the hospital and stuff. And that was like the worst call in the face of the earth. And so I wanted to redeem myself. I wanted to do a recording. And then I started, you know, thinking about what I was going to record. And I'm like, you know what? No, I want to wait and I want to talk about this so I can see everybody's faces and have them, you know, have it be in the moment and have it be right there. So I saw this, this quote popped up on, on somebody's page. I can't remember whose it was, but um, I was listening to a call. It was actually like um, during my lunch break, it was a live call with Jeff Hill, who's the director of sales with Beachbody. And, you know, I was listening to the whole thing and the whole time I'm like, okay, yep, I'm not really getting a lot out of this. Yep, 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 okay. And then finally at the end, he was talking about, you know, what is your why? And we talk about that all the time. You know, why are you doing this? To help people, to make money, um, you know, whatever it might be. And, you know, my why, I've, it's hard because I, you know, I've, I seem like I go back and forth all the time. And at the end of this call, he said, what if? He said, I want you to think about what your life could be like in five years. Like, what if you could have your kids' college funds set aside and paid for? What if you could have your house paid for? What if you could have your vehicle paid for? And just started listing off all this stuff. And I sat there and I realized that that's my why. Um, my, my family struggled with money my whole life. My parents are still struggling with money. And to grow up in a family like that, it was just hard to, you know, never ask for things or never get the cool things or the nice things or whatever, just because you knew it wasn't an option. You know, I couldn't go to basketball camps and softball camps and all these things because we didn't have the money. And so for me, like that, that's my why that really is why I'm doing this. You know, at first I thought, Oh, I want to, I want to be able to stay home with my daughter and it'd be okay. And I make enough money. And then the more I think about it, I'm like, I don't know if that's really what I want, but I want us to be financially okay. That you know, whatever happens, happens, you know, we don't have to worry about all the debt and all of those issues. And so, you know, that has kind of forwarded my goals for February. It's pushed my goals for the year. And I know some of you are just starting out and you are like, you know, she's talking crazy, you know, about all this kind of stuff, but it will take time. And for you to figure out what it really is that your why is like, why are you doing this? And, you know, yes, we're all in this to help people, but you know, if that's all it is, that's not deep enough. That's not strong enough. There has to be some underlying thing that you want to do. You know, yes, we want to help. We want to change lives. But what's in it for you? Like, what's making you put all this work into the trenches and messaging and inviting and dealing with all the negativity that comes backlashing out at you with this? You know, why is that for sure? important to you that you are doing this. And so I was sitting here doing my February goals today and I've been working on my year goals. And this just pops up is that you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. So, you know, if you are putting in just 20 minutes here, you know, no time the next day, you're posting once a day and then not at all, you can't expect to get those big rewards. You know, you have to put the time in now. You have to be willing to do more than what the next person's doing in order to get what it is that you really want. And it's all possible. It is. The more and more that I watch these videos and talk to coaches and see more and more, like, the potential is endless. You know, one of my newer coaches, she is from New York, and we met through Facebook. And it, it's so random. It's so weird. But 
there's so she has so many potential people that she can help that's so outside of our little Northwest Iowa corner. You know, it's never ending. There's so many people. And I told you guys when we were in Pittsburgh, we ran into so many people that had never heard of Beachbody. And here we were for a Beachbody convention. So there's always people that you can help and there's always room for you to grow and improve. And don't think that you can't do that just because of, you know, you live in, in Sanborn, Iowa or Sheldon, Iowa or whatever. Like there's always potential and room to grow. And it's just, it's, you have to decide what you want to do. You are the one that's holding you back from getting to that point. Um, so to be successful, some of the things are these things you need to do at least five days a week. And again, we talk about this, hopefully it's on your power hour tracker. Um, but these are the things that you need to do in order to be successful is to five, add five new friends on Facebook and then start five new conversations unrelated to Beachbody. Um, for me personally, these five conversations tend to go to those new people that I've added. Or like if you're doing the new coach training, and this is a genius idea, but change your profile picture. And then the people that like it or comment on it, start a conversation with them. Hey, thanks for liking my picture. Like what's new with you? Start those five new conversations, totally unrelated to Beachbody. Send three invites to challengers. Send two invites to join your team. And then two check-ins with your coaches or um, on your team. So, and I know that that inviting to your team, especially if you're just starting, that's hard, that's scary. Um, and, but that's one of my big goals this month is to recruit more. And it should definitely be on your list too. Even, even if you're just starting, there's nothing wrong with, you know, when I just, when I started, um, Julie was just decided to start too. And we were both like, uh, we have no idea what we're doing. And we figured a lot of it out together and um, we moved forward together and you know I had like Megan and Christy started at the same time they were my first coaches they were like my guinea pigs and I was like uh you know I'm trying to help them and I was still getting started there's nothing wrong with if you have a rock star challenger right now who is posting invite them what's the worst thing they can do you know think about what this has done for you what you've seen money-wise what you've felt by helping others and share that with somebody there's nothing wrong with you know, inviting. I've, I've gotten in the habit of trying to invite all of my challengers. Let them decide if they think coaching is for them or not. You know, let them say, eh, no, I'm too busy rather than you deciding that for them. One thing that's really been working too is to comment, compliment, question, and you get that conversation. So, oh my gosh, your kiddos are adorable. Um, you know, comment on something on their picture or whatever and ask my questions how old are they that gets the conversation going try to keep that conversation going by asking questions complimenting them getting to know them and so on um, and another thing with all of these conversations is find a way to track it figure out what works best for you i started out with paper and pencil and you know Hillary told me yep that's great if you want to do that but eventually you're gonna to need to do it on the computer and I'm like nah paper and pencil will work for me forever it's fine but now I'm starting to realize um, yep she was probably right and so I started transferring all of my notebook stuff to my Excel and then all of a sudden last week I was introduced introduced to streak which if you use Gmail streak is like this pipeline app type of thing and I can show um, if we have time at the end, I can screen share and show you that too. But basically like it's kind of like your Excel, but you put it in your Gmail. So it's kind of like always on your phone, that kind of thing. So now I've started to do streak. So figure out a way that works for you to track these conversations because I guarantee you Facebook messenger, if you are sending five new conversations, you're sending three invites, you're sending two invites and you're checking in, that's like 12 conversations you're going to have going in one single day you know, five days a week, that's 60 conversations, your Facebook Messenger is going to get overloaded. And if you think you're going to remember certain ones, you know, you're not. So get in that habit of messaging them, writing it down. Um, this is what I started doing in January. I have this little black notebook. And as soon as I add somebody, I write in. So like January 7th, I needed to check back with these people because I invited them on January 4th. So along with that tracking, figuring out a way to check back, 
I give them three days. If they don't respond to me in three days, then I go back and I say, hey, did you see my message? Blah, blah, blah. And then if they, we kind of talk, I still do the three-day rule. If I give them the lowdown of what the program is, what it's all about, three days later I come back. So figure out what works for you. But just don't wait too long, all right? Um, that was one thing I really struggled with when I was beginning is I would wait a week or I'd wait two weeks. Or all of a sudden it was a month later. I'm like, oh, yeah, I never heard back from them. And I go back to them. So make sure you're figuring out a way that works for you to track those conversations and to make sure you're going back and checking in. Um, I was telling Christy last week, it's on my list for tomorrow and it will get done, um, that I'm gonna go back through and clean up my messenger and the only messages that I'm gonna have in that little messenger sidebar are for that week. Um, and so I'm gonna archive them all because then you can still find them, but I'm gonna make sure I have them written down so I know who I've talked to. But I'm gonna keep just that week's messages in my messenger so hopefully and then every Sunday hopefully I can go through and clean it up and just try and keep myself a little bit more organized and a little less crazy when it comes to messenger I wish you could have different tabs in messenger and stuff that would be the most amazing thing in the whole entire world but figuring out what works for you um, having a system in place the sooner you do it the better off you are honestly take it from me um, you know and figure out a way you know, one section in your notebook, one section on your computer, whatever it might be there. So, um, next thing I wanted to say or talk about was, so rank advancing. Um, some of you are at that point where you're ready to start rank advancing or you're just starting coaching. Um, Emerald, for those of you that are brand spanking new, Emerald is a decision. Emerald is if you cover up the bottom three circles and you have the top two circles, that is emerald. So basically, emerald, you could hit that in a day, if even, because you sign up your spouse, boyfriend, significant other, whatever, because you say, um, I want um, another bag of Shakeology. So I'm gonna sign him up for a challenge pack because he's gonna start drinking Shakeology. Um, I just want an extra flavor, so I sign him up as a coach. Perfect. Then you ask your best friend, hey, I'm doing this challenge group. Um, do you want to get fit with me? Hey, perfect, yeah, okay. Or you ask those people that are closest to you. Honestly, you can hit Emerald in a day if you truly want to. It's a decision. Um, if it's taking you longer than a week to hit Emerald, honestly, I don't know. I don't want to say you're not trying hard enough, but – it's just to that point where it can, it can easily happen by getting those two people. And then you continue to build from there. So once you're at Emerald, here's your next goal is Diamond. Okay? And this is so doable. If you look at this, it is 10 people. 10 people is what you need to hit Diamond. So you've got you and you've got four coaches or four discount coaches, preferred customers. They don't even have to be working coaches. They can be preferred customers. And then you need two emeralds, one on each leg. If you sign up your spouse and you get to that point where you're hitting Success Club 10, you can start building your spouses. And they just need somebody on their left and their right. And then you find one other person who's a rock star that wants to coach, that wants to make money, that wants to help people, that wants to sign up their mom and their dad. Boom. They sign them up and they're emerald. So all of you, even if you're just starting out, I want you to make your own, and I will, I'll try to remember to post this in the group so you can print it off and fill it out, but this is where you need to go, and this is your next step. And again, even if you're just starting, this is so doable. Um, I think I hit, M, or I hit Diamond in like a month. Granted, I had a rock star coach right out the gate, and it was more so I had to get my husband to Emerald before, and that was what held me back from getting Diamond. Um, but it's all about that power of you sharing your story, you finding somebody else that wants to do it too. Um, and again, those rock star challengers that you have, just invite them, ask them, hey, you know, what's the worst thing they can say is no, right? That's the worst that they can say. Um, so definitely look at this, go from there. Um, one other thing I wanted to say about, about this with your posting um, is those objections that you get from people um, cost too much money, uh, I don't want to drink Shakeology, or um, right now I have a gal that is 
that she's pregnant and she wants to do this like none other, but her husband is won't let her do it. I'm like, so use that as a post. I don't know if you saw my post last week with me and Kevin where I told it like I was like, really? Like, do I have to ask you if I can eat healthy today? Like, can I drink my water today? Like, is that okay? Like that was an objection. I was tired of people telling me I have to ask my husband if I can do this. And so I turned it around and used it as a post. And so I encourage you to do that as well. Because eventually, you know, more people are going to have those objections. But the more often they see you posting about it, eventually it's going to turn them around and those kind of things. And also make sure you're reading some sort of professional development. Because in this month, in this push month, you're going to get a lot of no's. And it's going, I've already seen it today. It's been floating around. Um, some people up in Sibley have been posting kind of some nasty stuff about Beachbody and about Shakeology. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's negativity. And the best way to overcome it is to do that professional development. And um, so make sure that you are reading something and you're reading it every day. Do not skip out on that. That is the one thing that you, you can't skip because that's, what's going to make you grow the most and make you um, be able to withstand those negativities and those objections and those kind of things. Okay. So the big thing I really wanted to talk about today is how to figure out your niche. And this is something that I am really working on and focusing on as well too, because sometimes it just seems like you throw out a post and nobody gets it. Nobody likes it. Um, but you put out something really weird and crazy and everybody loves it. So finding your niche, these questions you need to ask yourself and you have to figure out who it is that you want to attract. A while back, I wrote down a list for me, like what my ideal challenger is. Um, new mom or a mom of younger kids, busy, full-time teacher, was really active before they had kids wanting to be more confident, hardworking, motivated, has that fire that's burning, and then wants to design their own life. Basically, I describe myself because that's who I want. That's who I want to work with is, and that's who I want to help when it comes to these challenge groups is people that are like me, people that are busy and are moms and, but want to be a priority themselves. So you need to ask yourselves these questions and think about it and answer it and figure out who it is that you want. You know, sometimes I get these random challengers and it doesn't work out and they cancel. And at first it really bothered me. And then I'm like, you know what? It's probably for the best. We didn't really click. We didn't really mesh. They weren't interacting back with me. They weren't in the challenge group. Um, but who is your target audience? Who's your ideal customer? Who's your ideal challenger? Who are you wanting to speak to? When you do your posts, when you are sharing your story, when you're sending a message, um, who is that person that you want to talk to? Who's that avatar? You know, think about them, design them, give them a name, and that's who you're posting to every single time. How will you, number two, how will you be introduced or how will you approach these people? So how are you going to find them? Most of us do a lot of this through social media, through Facebook, okay? So how are you going to find them? Teachers, how are you going to find a teacher? Okay, I'm going to look at friends of friends who are maybe teachers at other schools, other districts. I'm going to add them and see if they'll add me back and try and start a conversation. Or I'm going to find different teaching groups and I'm going to start asking questions in there and building relationships in those groups. Um, how, you know, if it's in person, how are you going to approach them? How are you going to go about talking about the 21 day fix or the coaching opportunity? What are you, how are you going to do that? Um, Number three, what are their biggest burdens and the problems that they face? Maybe it is money. Maybe they can't afford a $140 challenge pack. How are you going to help them overcome that? How are you going to help them see that really it's $4 a day? All right. How are you going to the problems? Maybe they do have a spouse that is like, you do not need to spend money on this. Okay. How are you going to help them overcome that? How are you going to respond and answer to that? Um, how do you intend to affect these or how can you help them solve their problems? So how do you, how are you going to approach it? How are you going to combat it? How are you going to figure out a way to help them through that? And then the biggest one is what makes your offer better than your competitors? We have a lot of coaches in this area in Northwest Iowa. 
what makes you better than the next person? And I know there's a lot of us, even on this call, that we have talked to people and then we see that the next couple weeks later, they've signed up with somebody else. And I've seen it, uh, people that I've talked to, and then my own coaches, they've signed up with my own coaches. And at first I'm like, oh, but then I'm like, really? You know what? That's fine. They see a better fit with them and that's okay. And maybe I didn't do a good enough job of following up, but they offered something that was better than what I could give them. And that's fine. Um, you can't take that to heart. You can't let that get to you. You've got to focus on what can I offer and who am I looking for and how am I going to get to them? When you really narrow this down, you're going to find a little bit more success. You're posting. You're going to think about who am I wanting this to hit? Who do I want this to impact? You know, and then when you start those conversations, you want to have like this back and forth conversation. So they use the basketball analogy. You want to go five on five. You want to have five back and forth or five passes. I shouldn't say five on five. You want to have five passes back and forth before you can shoot the basket. So you want to have five back and forth before you finally pull the trigger because you want to get that conversation started. What kind of exercise do you like? What are your goals? Um, do you, are you a morning worker out or are you an afternoon? Like, do you struggle with time? You know, asking those questions, getting that conversation flowing back and forth and, and trying to get to know them. And this was one thing, again, I'm, get, I'm telling you from experience. I was been looking back at my messages that I sent in September and I'm like, no wonder these people didn't sign up with me in September. I was super like, hey, how are you? I have a group. Do you want to join? Literally, like that is what I would say. And I look back, I'm like, gosh, that was stupid. Why did I do that? Now, so don't be like me, right? Okay? Okay. But I mean, you have to learn from your mistakes, right? But now I look at it and I'm like, you know, trying to draw that more of that conversation. And, you know, what exercise do you like? Do you have any restrictions? You know, what do you, do you struggle more with fitness or nutrition? Getting to know them so they don't feel so much as like, you're my success club six point today. So I really need you to sign up so I can get the SC5. Okay. They can tell when you think that way. But when you look at them as, hey, you are a new mom with three little kids that I can help fit this into your busy schedule, they're going to be more apt to want to work with you because they can feel that positivity or feel that you actually are caring and wanting to help them and those kind of things. Um, so then you figure out your niche, right? Oh, you figure out your niche. So now you have to put it into practice. You have to tell your story. You, you want to help those busy moms, those new moms. If I never talk about my struggles as a new mom or trying to fit in with my 14 month old, if I never tell them about that, they're never going to want to come to me. They're not going to be attracted to me. Um, looking at your page, is there depth to your page or are you surface? Here's my water. Drink it. It's Thursday. You know, here's my shake. Oh, it's so yummy. I worked out today, woohoo, you know, or is there depth? Are you telling a story? Are you explaining your struggles? Are you sharing your successes? All of that stuff. Are you talking about your business? And I, I know a lot of us are struggling with this right now because we don't look at it as a business, but it is a business. And are you talking about it? Are you talking about the coaching opportunity? Are you talking about what it's doing for you? There has to be just like with 80% you and 80% your other coach or 20% your coaches, there needs to be that with your posts. There needs to be like 80% of your personal, your personal life, um, you know, sharing. And then 20% needs to be, here's the business. Here's my challenge group. It will take somebody about five to seven times to see something before they will actually commit to it. Think about, you know, ads on TV and that kind of thing. It's what kind of the same thing. Seeing? Somebody's got to see you talk oh, about the coaching opportunity five times before they actually start to consider, hey, maybe this is for me. You know, so think about that 80-20 rule and really look at what you're posting. Is there depth to it? Am I really opening up and reaching to that ideal person that I want on my team or that I want in my challenge groups? Also, if you're not doing it already, I encourage you, plan out your posts. Plan out how you're going to get that in-depth content. Because if you don't, that's when you're going to get that surface level stuff. 
And I'm guilty of it too. Sometimes I'm like, oh crap, it's Thursday, it's noon, I have nothing, here's my water, okay? You know, and sometimes that's gonna happen, but you, you wanna try and plan out the best you can those posts and get that in-depth um, content and drawing towards that ideal challenger. So action, what you need to do now, take this, pick a topic, pick a theme. So like yesterday was our ab, our core challenge. Um, the 15th, if you wanna focus on your challenge groups, 15th, um, working on a better you, we're gonna do a little bit of personal development. Pick a theme and brainstorm these posts or content that fit that. So like for example, not that I want um, you to, but like Abby's doing a February month of love, love yourself. She's kind of focusing on that every day. Um, but with the 15th, you know, um, what posts can you do to talk about loving yourself, you know, getting down to the nitty gritty about being happy with you, nothing to do with weight loss and inches, but focusing on you, making a better you. So picking a theme, brainstorming that topics. And like I said, five to seven times. So the challenge group yesterday started dead and gone. You have got, you know, 13, 12, 13 days until the next challenge group starts. So you've got time to sprinkle in those seven. And it doesn't have to be a, my next group starts on the 15th. Comment below to join me. It doesn't have to be stuff like that. It can be you sharing your personal development. What's a quote from your book that helped you get through your day? Or what's a picture you saw that helped you get through your day? Or whatever it might be. You know, pick a topic, pick a theme brainstorm, figure out that content, that deep content. How can you share your message? How can you share that? Um, and then just get a blank calendar. I've been working on mine, trying to figure it out, you know, just make a blank calendar and figure out some of your posts. You know, what do you like tonight? I'm doing kind of a poach, uh, poaching, coaching post, trying to sprinkle that in a little bit. Tomorrow I'm going to do a post, um, gearing towards the, the free group sneak peek next week. Um, and then Thursday, I'm going to do another coach or another coaching opportunity. Same thing on Sunday. I'm going to do another coaching opportunity. So I'm trying to sprinkle it, alter it. I'm trying to hit more of the coaching posts and getting that out there. Um, but pick where you need to work on. Pick, figure out your niche and then plan and post like you are trying to talk to that person you know how can you that's who you want to help that's who you want to attract is the people that are just like you and to help them gain their momentum and and join your group and change and those kind of things so um oh my gosh all right i got a minute and a half left anybody got any questions <gasps> i will share do you guys want me to share try and share those slides in the group Okay, I'll try and I did it on, um, actually I have them all as pictures, so I'll just upload all the pictures to the group because I, my, this computer is at my school computer, it's a different one and it has like a weird, it's like Libre office or something. So um, I'll do that right now when we get done off the call, I will um, upload all those pictures. But um, how about this, if you have any questions, why don't you just post them um, below after I upload all the pictures. Um, Cause yeah, we have less than a minute. So Megan, if you have your list of three questions, you can post them on the pictures. She always has questions. So there's no awkward silence. <laughs> so, all right. Awesome. Well, I will go post those right now. Um, if you do have questions, definitely post them below. I know it was a ton of information all at one time, but hopefully that was a better call than two weeks ago. So I feel better about it. So. All right. Thanks for jumping on. Enjoy your day tomorrow. So, Julia, you guys like totally snowed in. Yeah. 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 We won't be going anywhere for a while. So. Yeah.